So I've got five modules stacked up here in the front battery box as a, uh, to prove that they'll fit well. And the clearances are tighter than in the rear battery box, which is what I anticipated when I cut these uh, steel angles and welded the box together because the space up under the hood is also a tighter um, fit. But it looks like they'll fit just fine. And keep in mind that this whole box is going to be rotated so it's sitting on its side. These uh, plastic pieces of each module will be facing down instead of facing outwards like this. So the two pieces of steel channel here, this one that I'm holding and this one that's held in with magnets right now, getting ready to weld it. Uh, these are backing supports for the front battery box. Uh, and they're necessary because the modules are going to be resting on the bottom but also pressed up against the back of the box with some straps. Um, so the PVC alone is not strong enough to hold the weight of the modules uh, at all. So I need to, I'm going to need to weld in these two straps here about 18 inches apart to support the weight of the modules. So I got the supports welded in for the back of the front battery box. Um, welds are pretty decent. They hold plenty of weight. I stood on them and they are just fine. But I also made this bracket here out of three uh, steel channels, the narrower or the sh shorter kind. And this is going to be how the motor is mounted to the bottom of the front battery box. Uh, so the motor is just hanging off the transmission right now, and that's obviously not enough support. So this will be like this, and it will go under uh, the front battery box, be welded on. And that's how the motor will be supported on the other end. I also welded on the two support beams for the bottom of the front battery box. Um, and I decided that I'm going to put the battery box in a different way than I was originally planning on. So instead of these two supports being at the back of the battery box, they're going to be at the front, towards the front of the car. Um, and this is so that I can angle the battery box in such a way so that there's a couple of parts from the car. is um, the master cylinder for the clutch and stuff that needs a bit more clearance. And by putting it in this way, I will have that clearance. On uh, this steel channel here is going to be how the battery box is mounted on the uh, right side of the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, so these bolt holes here connect to the original engine mount. There's only one engine mount. There's three transmission mounts. This connects to the original engine mount on the passenger side of the car. And that'll hold uh, probably about half of the total weight in this battery box. So now you can hopefully see what I mean uh, for this passenger side front battery box mount. It's going to bolt in on that side something like that and that's going to be how the this one side of the front battery box is going to be supported. Uh, I welded in a steel channel to this transmission mount here. Uh, the welding was kind of tough for some reason it wasn't welding real well um, but it is it is on there pretty well and this is going to be the uh, driver's side support for the front battery box. Um, so I'm going to be drilling some holes in this and it'll be the battery box will be bolted directly to this, uh, maybe with some insulating rubber or foam. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a lot of the support for this battery box. And this bracket here, uh, which was originally used for the 12 volt battery, 
Uh, but I won't be using it for that anymore because it's in a perfect place. You can see the bolt holes, the four bolt holes um, for this bracket. But it's in a perfect place to act as a secondary, secondary support for this uh, piece of steel here. Um, so I'm going to be use cutting that down and welding it in, welding it onto this uh, steel channel, and that'll be the driver's side support for this uh, front battery box. So I welded on the uh, old battery, 12-volt uh, battery mount to the steel channel that supports the driver's side of the uh, front battery box. Um, and I also drilled some bolt holes in it and put this piece of foam in to insulate this uh, battery box from the metal so that it's not a metal-on-metal -metal contact which can you know, create vibrations and road noise. Uh, I have three M8 nuts and washers holding down this side and then on the other side with the engine, the original engine mount, uh, three M12 nuts and washers with the nuts on both sides. It's just a straight bolt with no head. Um, but yeah, this battery box is very secure, exactly how I wanted it to be. So I'm pretty happy with this. I just welded this piece on to the uh, front battery box. And this is going to attach with these two bolt holes here and here, one on each end, to this uh, motor mount or motor mounting bracket uh, for the Hyper 9 motor. So I got the bracket test fitted and it's fitting pretty good. Um, I have two M10 bolts securing it to the the motor uh, mount to the mounting bracket, um, 50 millimeters long, and I have the nut on the inside and the bolt head on the bottom, on the motor mount side. You can see the other one down at the other end. Um, and I also, I have this piece of steel channel here clamped uh, with one hole drilled through it that I have a bolt passing through um, that's holding this right now so I can mark another spot so I can drill another hole and support this uh, half shaft. The original support for the half shaft was this bracket here, but it's overkill um, for what I need because this was also originally holding um, the exhaust manifold, uh, which is a lot more weight than I'll ever put on uh, the bracket. So it's easier to just do it this way instead of reusing this bracket. I marked the other bolt hole um, on this support bracket for the half shaft. I have to drill it out. And I have here, this is a impact drill from Harbor Freight. It was like $25. And this is the kind of tool you want to use because it has a lot of torque. So it'll still be able to cut through this metal uh, at pretty slow speeds. Um, and you do want to go very slow because when you're drilling through steel like this, uh, the bit and the metal both get really hot and heat is what will kill these uh, drill bits. These are stepped titanium coated steel bits. They're five or six dollars each. They're not cheap at all. Um, but they do a great job of drilling through the metal. You just have to be patient with it. And we're through. So I got to Keep going at it, make the hole the same size as this one, but we do have a through hole now. I now have all the battery boxes mounted. Um, this front one I got mounted a couple days ago, but I haven't really been filming anything. I'm just ready to move on past these battery boxes. It's a lot of work, um, and it's not that exciting. So I'm just going to give you a quick uh, walk through, a quick tour of all three battery boxes, and that'll be it for the battery boxes. Uh, this front battery box that holds five of the modules you've seen a lot of, but I do have the support bracket for the half shaft off the transmission. Um, I don't have the bolts in yet because I have to adjust the holes a little bit, they're not perfectly aligned. But this one's also more or less done. Um, so now just the back battery box where the gas tank was. So you can see the way that this back battery box is mounted. Um, I have these, this steel wire, which is looped uh, through the uh, gas tank straps, which I cut and drilled holes in. 
Um, the other side is the same thing, but that bracket just sits right in the steel channel. Um, so it's pretty stable, pretty sturdy, and that made it a lot easier to mount. I didn't have to be as precise with it. Um, so that it would fit the original gas tank straps without cutting them. This just made it a lot easier.